I'd like to talk about backbone event zombies. What are backbone event zombies? The symptom of backbone event zombies uh, can be summed up with the summary. When I re-render my view and interact with a bound component, I have events firing more than once. This uh, is a definite problem with backbone JS applications, uh, and there's an easy solution. Um, one of the best resources out there for a long time has been Derek Bailey's article on managing page transitions in Backbone apps. Uh, and he addresses a couple of different approaches to solving this problem. And I'd like to just basically break down uh, the problem so that you can actually see what's going on uh, behind the scenes so that we can understand how we could build our own solution instead of using somebody else's. So this is a fairly common problem. And to demonstrate this, I've got just a simple application set up here. This is using Twitter Bootstrap and Backbone as the guts of it, basically. And so I, I have a little nav bar here with what I'm going to spike out as two pages. And I think that the first place we can start is with our views. And don't worry about the structure of how this is laid out. That's not the focus. I just want to work through the process of how people would create pages. So if I want, uh, for example, a home page, uh, I'm just going to say that uh, my pages are just going to have a title. And it's just going to be that. So let's spike out the about page as well. And this is probably typical of something you might see somebody start with. So there's my two little views. You'll notice that I haven't extended backbone.view. I've just extended uh, this mythical page abstraction that I don't have yet. And that's OK. Let's make uh, the page abstraction. And this is where a lot of people start with working in transitions to their single page application. So the first thing that this page abstraction is going to have to do is it's going to have to uh, inject pages into the markup somewhere. So if we open up the WebKit inspector, uh, we can take a look at how this is laid out. There's the overall container. Uh, here's the nav bar with the Twitter bootstrap styling. And there's this div with an ID of page. So I think that this is a fairly common pattern. People just want to inject their pages into sort of one container uh, and then reuse it. So let's say that every page is just going to live inside of, of there. And for the uh, sake of simplicity, uh, I'm just going to make a very simple template using underscore. And let's put an h2 in that says, I am the title page. And we're also going to stick an input in here. so that we can test our event bindings. So we need a render for our page function, as uh, that's what's going to do the bulk of the work. And so our render is going to do one thing, basically. It's going to set the value of the page elements, uh, HTML. and just drive it in like that. So there, we've got a, a simple page abstraction. Uh, we've got a template, and we've got two instances of that. So let's reload our page and see if we can actually get some of those to come up. Nothing happens here by default. Uh, I don't have a router in place. So let's play with the API a little and see how we can uh, look at uh, these pages being rendered. So I'll move up a homepage instance and call render on it. And you can see that it gets injected into uh, the page container. We can take a look at that markup. Let's just make this a little bigger. There we go. So you can see that the h2 from our template and the input were correctly injected into the div with the ID of page. Let's do the same thing uh, and take a look at the about page. So that's cool. I can flip back and forth between those two. This button doesn't do anything yet because I haven't hooked up any events. So this scales 
pretty well and works pretty well until you introduce events into the equation, uh, which isn't too long uh, in most backbone applications because events are the heart of every backbone application. So let's add some events to both of these things. And we're just gonna say that when you click on the say hi uh, input on each page, uh, we wanna alert what the page's name is. So there's the home page. Do the same thing for the about page. So let's reload that. Let's render up the, the home page. And now I can click on this, and you can see that it alerts on the home page. Cool, that's as expected. Uh, the problem and where we start seeing the zombies is if I now transition without reloading the page to the about page, and I click on this. Now we see that I'm the home page comes up and then there's another dialogue that comes up that says I'm the about page. So this is you know slightly problematic, but even worse when we then go back to the home page, now we've got I'm the home page, the about page, and the home page. So we've got three uh, events bound to uh, this page uh, element. And the reason that is is because Backbone uses something called event delegation. Uh, event delegation is beyond the scope of the screencast, so if you don't know what it is, I recommend you go check it out. Uh, but in a nutshell, it uh, it delegates events on the root element uh, at using jQuery's or Zepto's delegate function. So in our case, every time we render one of these pages, because we're reusing the, the page div, uh, Backbone will basically rebind another click event uh, on top of it, and it's additive. So every time I switch between these pages, it's gonna do that. So now I should have four alerts, one, two, three, four. Obviously this is undesirable, something that you don't wanna have happen. So how can we solve this? Uh, a real easy way to do it is to eliminate uh, this L um, as the source of uh, the root page element, and instead still construct the element the same way, but then at the end we're just going to say that inside of our page we want to empty out whatever it's inside of it, and then after we've created the element we just want to append it. So let's take a look at how that works. So now if I do the home page, I can click say hi, that works. Functionally it didn't change anything, um, except we now have this empty div on the inside. And this is sort of the critical distinction. Uh, if you investigate backbone views, you will know that if you do not define a value for uh, EL, you'll actually just get an empty div by default. That's the default value. And so the cool thing uh, is now I can go to the about page and I can click say hi, and only the about page dialog pops up. And I can go back to the home page and click say hi, and only the home page shows up. So why is this? Well, it's basically because I talked about event delegation before, and when we had the element inside of our page abstraction, the markup was just being driven into the ID of page, and that's where the events were being delegated. Now that we've eliminated that and just modified our render so that it actually empties whatever's inside of the page and appends the element of each page, which in this case is the default div, that empty div root level element uh, is the place where all of the events are bound. And this is the critical distinction. So I think a popular solution or one of the easiest solutions is just understanding event delegation uh, and how you can avoid zombies by determining where backbone views bind the events. I hope that this has been helpful. That's all I really wanted to say about backbone uh, view level zombie events. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I've got links in the video here. As well, all the source code for this uh, is in GitHub, so you can poke around with it and play with it. Thanks.